In multiple regression, we use not one, but several quantitative predictors to predict a quantitative response variable. In this video, you'll learn why multiple regression is useful and how we express a multiple regression model at the sample and population level, and how to interpret the regression coefficients and intercept. Earlier, I tried to predict the popularity of cat videos measured by number of page views using cat age. If I were to collect actual data, I would probably find that cat age doesn't predict popularity very well. This is no wonder. The popularity of cat videos is undoubtedly influenced by a lot of other things, besides the cat's age. Possible other relevant characteristics are the cat's fluffiness or hairiness in terms of hair length, its attractiveness, how funny its behavior is, or to what extent it mimics human emotions. With multiple regression, I can add such variables as additional predictors, which will, hopefully, result in a more appropriate, better fitting model and better predictions. I can also add variables to control for their possibly confounding influence. For example, the time a video has been available online will influence its popularity. It has nothing to do with the attractiveness of the video, but it might explain why some videos of very cute and funny kittens aren't as popular as expected, and some videos of older cats are more popular than expected. OK, so what does the model look like? Well, it's an extension of the simple linear model. At the sample level, we express it as y hat sub i equals a plus b sub 1 times x sub i sub 1 plus b sub 2 times x sub i sub 2, and so on until we reach the last predictor, denoted m. So we end with b sub m times x sub i sub m. Note that the sub i's indicate that y and the x's stand for individual values. At the population level, we express the model as mu sub y equals alpha plus beta sub 1 times x sub 1 plus beta sub 2 times x sub 2, and so on, ending with beta sub m times x sub m. To understand how to interpret this model, let's consider a simple example with only two predictors. Suppose we add hairiness as a predictor to model video popularity. Hairiness is rated on a scale between 0 and 10, with 0 meaning hairless and a 10 meaning long-haired, like a Persian cat. Say we find this regression equation, y hat sub i equals 34.372 minus 1.775 times h sub i plus 1.414 times hairiness sub i. We can visualize this model by considering the relation between cat age and video popularity at particular values of hairiness. Say we take hairless cats with a hairiness score of zero. Given this hairiness score, what is the relation between age and popularity? Well, if we fill in zero in the equation, we simply get y hat sub i equals 34.372 minus 1.775 times age sub i. This can be drawn as a simple regression line. Now consider the relation for a hairiness score of 1. If we enter a hairiness score of 1 in the equation, we get y hat sub i equals 34.372 minus 1.775 times h sub i plus 1.414, which equals 35.786 minus 1.775 times h sub i. If we enter a hairiness score of 2, we get y hat sub i equals 34.372 minus 1.775 times h sub i plus 2.828, which equals 37.200 minus 1.775 times h sub i. The regression lines predicting popularity with cat age at given values of hairiness all run parallel. From this, we can see that in multiple regression, for a particular predictor, the regression coefficient gives you the change in the response variable per unit increase of that predictor, given the values of the other predictors. It's important to note that the size of each regression coefficient depends on the scale of the predictor. So we can't say that the predictor age, which is larger, is more influential in predicting popularity than the hairiness age ranges from 0 to about 15, while hairiness ranges between 0 and 10. Another thing to note is that the value of the regression coefficient for age in our multiple regression equation is different from the value in the simple regression equation, even though the observations are the same. 
In the simple case with just age as predictor, we consider the relation between cat age and popularity while ignoring all other variables. By adding hairiness as a predictor, we control for the effect of hairiness when we consider the relation between cat age and popularity. We consider the relation for each level of hairiness, which might result in a stronger or weaker relation between cat age and popularity. We can visualize the entire model by adding another axis, the z-axis, to represent hairiness. You can see that the parallel lines now form a plane in a three-dimensional graph. This plane represents the predicted values produced by the model. The intercept A is where the plane crosses the y-axis. So the intercept A represents the predicted value when cat age and hairiness are both zero. Just like in simple linear regression, I can calculate the residuals, the vertical distances between the observations and the predicted values, which in this case lie on the regression plane. These residuals are used to find the intercept and regression coefficients that provide the best fitting plane through the data points. Just like in simple regression, the residuals are minimized using the method of ordinary least squares. Because the resulting formulas for the intercept and regression coefficients are more complicated, we'll use statistical software to calculate them. At the population level, we model the means of the conditional distributions, mu sub y. For every point on the plane, for every combination of cat age and hairiness, we assume there is a distribution of popularity scores. The mean of this distribution lies on the plane. The standard deviations of all these conditional distributions are assumed to be identical, so the spread of observations around the plane is assumed to be the same everywhere. With more than two predictors, it's no longer possible to represent the model visually in one graph, but the logic and the interpretation of the intercept and regression coefficients is the same.